Hello everyone and welcome to the back room. The Atari SM124 monochrome monitor is well known to anyone familiar with the Atari ST. It's simple, compact and produces a good display as well as providing sound output. It wasn't cheap back in the day but it wasn't super expensive either. This one is mine, it's original to me and I bought it alongside my Atari STM in early 1988. At the front there's a green LED when the mo monitor is powered on and if I turn it around you can see that there are three controls recessed into the case here for brightness, contrast and there's an on off switch and this controls the volume. At the rear there are permanently connected cables labeled power and a video and there's also a date stamp here on this one which says March 1988. It's all very minimal and simple but it matches the ST closely and has served me well over the years. These monitors are widely available secondhand and usually pretty cheap. There is, however, a downside to the SM124 and anyone familiar with them will know exactly what I'm talking about. If I switch it on, the picture is oddly compressed. There's plenty of screen real estate, but it simply isn't being used. Look at this huge border around this tiny little display. Now this is weirdly as intended from the factory, but it is something of a shame. Fortunately, you can enlarge the display to fill the screen, but those who did so back in the day often found that the monitor failed. And the reason is simple. Within the uh, design is a 2.2 microfarad non-polarized electrolytic capacitor designated C714 on the circuit board. And that is a known fail point in the design and uh, it is stressed beyond endurance by tweaking the screen size and soon fails. Fortunately, repair is easy and once repaired, specifically with parts of greater tolerance, it's unlikely to happen again. So follow along with me while I increase the display size and replace the capacitor on my much loved SM124. Now, in keeping with its simple design, taking the monitor apart is relatively straightforward. At the rear, there are five screws. one either side at the top of the monitor one here just above where the power cord comes out of the back And two here at the bottom. All of these screws are the same size, so you don't need to worry about remembering which screw comes from where. And they all look like this. Carefully lift off the rear cover. And then another good idea is to remove the neck board. Turn this around so you can see what I'm doing here. Just carefully pulling off 
the neck board. There we are. Now, in order to get at the circuit board on some of these SM124s, it is possible to get to the board from underneath, so you can certainly desolder certain things and uh, check connections and what have you. Here on this particular model, as you can see, you can't get at it, so I'm gonna have to strip it down further in order to get to the circuit board. And the way to do that initially is to undo this. And another one just inside. And again, these are the same size, so you can cheerfully mix them up. And then this little panel simply slides along and comes away. Then you can unplug the controls and now we have access to the various trimmers and coil that we need to adjust the screen so this here will adjust the horizontal width of the screen and we have a trim here a little trim port that we'll use to adjust the height of the screen immediately behind the adjustable coil here between the coil and the uh, line output transformer the flyback is capacitor c714 and that is the capacitor that we will be removing and replacing and I will show you that once we get the rest of the board out that is relatively easy to do there are a number of screws or a number of other connectors to remove so let me do that now And here we have it. The circuit board is free. The neck board is still attached, of course, because it's actually soldered to the board. This is capacitor C714. And uh, this is the capacitor we're going to be replacing.
Off camera, I removed this C714, which is the bipolar capacitor that so often fails. To upgrade this capacitor, you'll need a non-polarized replacement with the same capacitance, but a greater voltage rating. This original is rated at 2.2 microfarads and 50 volts. Now I looked through my stock and came across these are one microfarad metal film caps which are non-polarized of course and rated for 250 volts. So if I stack a couple of these like this and uh, solder the legs together so that these capacitors are in parallel that will give me two microfarads which is close enough. And here it is done. So now I'll put the monitor back together and test that it's still working before enlarging the display. Okay, here we are. So with the SM124 back together, it is time to switch it on and see if after the capacitor swap, it is in fact still working. So I have an Atari ST plugged into this machine. The Atari ST is already on, into the uh, monitor, sorry. Atari ST is already on, so here goes nothing. Let's... I can hear voltage cool okay so the monitor is in fact still working now what I need to do is to adjust the picture I want to make it wider and I want to make it deeper or taller whichever way you want to look at this I do have some alignment tools but I don't have the correct alignment tools I don't have one which is the correct size to adjust this coil here uh, and also it's not long enough and I really don't want to put my hands too near anything in the back whilst the uh, monitor is on. So I have used a couple of wooden skewers like this and I have fashioned a crude hexagon on the end of one and a flathead screwdriver on the end of the other. This one I've already tried in the coil and I know it uh, it will adjust it, it works. This one, I think the trimmer, the little trim pot is actually too tight for this to adjust. I can't get enough twist on this, but we'll give it a go anyway. So we'll start with the coil. Just put it gently in. And that is bringing the screen out to the edges. I will need to center it, I think. That is certainly bringing it out and making it wider. Now you've just got to be very, very delicate with these coils. The carbon insert that you're turning is incredibly delicate and you really don't want to break it and then have to find another one, of course. So I think if that was centered, that would look pretty good. Centering the picture after adjusting the horizontal width on this particular circuit board is relatively easy. There is a H center trim pot here just to the right of the coil that you use to adjust the uh, width of the picture and if I, I unfortunately don't have the correct alignment tool and as I said my uh, skewer 
doesn't quite have enough purchase on the trim pot to turn it so I'm having to use this metal screwdriver which is not ideal it has a plastic handle but even so I really don't want to poke around in the back of the SM124 uh, with a metal <laughs> screwdriver so I'm keeping one hand firmly behind my back as per all of the advice when adjusting televisions or monitors or CRTs in other words and I'm wearing some rubber gloves which will hopefully keep me safe. And as you can see, I'm just very delicately turning this. Anti-clockwise, and that is shifting the position of the picture. Now I'm just gonna open it out a little more on the coil. Just bring out the width a little more and then adjust the centering again okay that is not looking too bad now I'll use my skewer to see if I can adjust the vertical height but I suspect it will not um, turn the trim pot comfortably. Oh, it is. It's starting to move it. There we are. That is much better. So with the back cover on, it's time to put the screws back in place and then have a final check to make sure everything is okay. And so there we are everyone it is entirely possible to make the sm124 screen larger but you will have to change that capacitor and they very often fail anyway so changing it is not a bad thing i would have liked a little more depth here but as i don't have the correct alignment tool and um i didn't want to damage the trim port in any way i'm i'm happy with this for now if i can find some alignment tools then i will certainly adjust it further i think there's very slight skewing in this top corner as well which I might adjust but I can do that uh, another time when I get another alignment tool or a proper alignment tool these these skewers do work they work very well actually but with this one I just couldn't quite get sufficient torque to turn the trim pot for the uh, vertical height but with this it's so much better and uh, I am um, yeah happy with that so i think with that we'll end the video here thank you for watching everyone and i'll see you again very soon in the back room